It's a great pleasure to have Don Bob his doctor to give it a look at today, and I'm going to request to end please. I can't see who else is attending this colloquium, but certainly the audience here, Japal, doesn't need it. Okay, therefore I do. <laughs> <laughs> Japal has been here for, has been a constant visitor for a long time. You don't need it. But uh, all of you here know that uh, he was one of the first people to talk about hydrodynamics and conditions. In fact, I learned about hydrodynamics from this 1983. Oh, that's a classic. So nobody refers to it anymore. And, uh, you know, I noticed that he had also before that done work on work which will come back in fashion in a few years when the CBM experiment starts off, compressed medium because he has a well known report. On nuclear compressors, but more than more after that, he's been working on a variety of topics in the ion collisions. Many of us know him from his work on uh, resummations of the uh, collision series. Okay, in fact, uh, during the years that we had a project together, uh, Jean Paul and his collaborators uh, worked out a little bit to be coupling expansions for the Hawk number system. Yes. Which were, of course, something that we were very interested in quantum mechanics. Yes. That was it. More recently, he has been doing other work, some of which you can do. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Surendu, and thank you for your hospitality. Um, I am indeed going to talk about hydrodynamics, and uh, you remind me of my old paper of 93. Yeah, this was just after Bjork and the initial. Uh, and a well known paper. But at that time, uh, hydrodynamics uh, didn't work so well. I mean, we had uh, uh, very few data, uh, the collision energy was low. Uh, we have uh, high multiplicity PP bar events at Fermi Lab. I mean, but high multiplicity at the time were six or seven piles of collision. So see that changed completely. And now the question. I'm going to address today is uh, hydrodynamics works, and uh, and what I was what I'm interested in is to try to understand why it works so well. Um, yes, why, why am I? Okay, so so I mean much of the work that I'm going to present today was done in collaboration with uh, with the young colleagues at uh, at the Shanghai uh, Li Yang, and also uh, more recently we've been collaborating with the senior. The Jai Swal who is uh, present here. Okay, so so uh, to put the, the subject into perspective, uh, let me. Show you the first slide, which will give you a picture. It's a cartoon of a, a, a relativistic heavy ion collision. Initially, the two uh, Lorentz contracted nuclei approach each other, produce particle, and then there is this fairly long regime, uh, time scale of the order of the size of the system, during which the expansion of the matter, which is produced in this collision, behaves, I mean, is well described by uh, the equation of fluid dynamics. And then there is uh, other things going on later on. So, I don't know that this works well, amazingly well. And it works even in a regime where, a priori, you would not expect it to work, particularly at early time, or in a regime where the gradient of the fields are, are very large. And, and the main message of the, of the talk would be to uh, convince you that uh, perhaps, uh, at least in early time, where we understand from various points of view what's going on, that the success of Hydrodynamic in second order, and I will explain later what is word is for Stewart for those of you who are not familiar with the field, uh, what this uh, second order is for Stewart hydrodynamics means. But it allows to describe early time uh, regime. And the reason is that this equation of this right keyboard, in fact, have a specific mathematical structure which allows them to capture uh, early phase of the expansion, which is 
it tends to be a collision message. So it has nothing to do with hydro uh, proper, but it turns out that uh, it mimics uh, a, a regime which is a kinetic regime, which is uh, as a tricky one. So now this is the, this is where I want to to arrive, and to do that, let me remind you a few facts about hydrodynamics. The fluid behavior requires that some kind of local equilibrium is reached amongst the various uh, constituents of the system. That takes time, uh, the start and and, uh, and and which are the processes which are involved in this uh, thermalization? These are the typical questions that, that we might like to understand. Now, the traditional picture is that uh, they are, I mean, usually we have one thing, and this is what I will be doing later, that they are a collision among the constituents of the fluid. This collision makes the momentum distribution more and more disordered, and, uh, and, and that involves a, a rather fast relaxation. So the short wavelength excitation will relax quickly, and what remains are, on longer time scale, are the quantities which are not affected by collision. But the energy and momentum are conserved in individual conditions. So they, are, they, don't, they don't relax on, on short time scale, they relax by other processes. And this is, in fact, the whole uh, issue of hydrodynamics. So, what, uh, let me specify even more the problem I want to address. And I'm going to simplify uh, as much as I can. So, in this thermalization, there are two main issues one which concerns the um, the rearrangement of momentum modes, the transfer of momentum from one region to the other. In collision, you see there is equilibration because particles with large momentum try to share with the momentum with particles which have less momentum, leading eventually to the equilibrium distribution, either Boltzmann or Fermi Dirac or Einstein. I'm not going to talk at all about that. Well, the, the only thing I would be interested in is the fact that uh, in, in this uh, real going of the momentum, an important aspect is the fact that the momentum distribution eventually becomes isotropic, a sphere in momentum space. And this is what I want to understand, and you will see soon why there is, a, there is an issue here. So the main, the main problem which I want to, to analyze in this talk is how how the distribution function become isotropic in the context of this uh, ABI approach. So why is this a problem? It's a problem because the matter when it is produced expand in the wrong, in, in, in the direction of the collision axis at the speed of light. This is something which is uh, like an external constraint, if you wish, and uh, which uh, has a consequence of uh, making the momentum distribution very anisotropic. Um, um, how should we should, should we see that? You see, particle in mean, the two nuclei collide. Particles are produced. There is a boost invariance of the system, which I will uh, comment uh, uh, in more detail in a, in a, in a moment. Um, but um, if you see at the same, I mean, let's say, imagine the collision takes place at z equal to zero, z being the collision axis. So there are particles which move very fast in the positive or negative z direction, and particles which move slowly. And after a while, the particles which move fast escape from the collision region. And what remains in the in the in, in the sky is z equal to zero, or particles which have essentially zero velocity. Direction. So the result is that the momentum distribution becomes squeezed in the z direction and Unaffected, let's say, in the transverse space. Now, you see, this effect really uh, it, it, it is opposed to the effect of collision, which try to make the distribution isotropic. And this competition between these two effects, which are which are, which I'm going to, to to analyze in, in some detail. Uh, to to characterize this sort of phenomenon, it's convenient to introduce two pressures. One pressure in the longitudinal direction, which I call P sub L. And the pressure in the transverse direction, which I call P. So, yes, we talked about this in a minute, but there are expectation of how isotropic distribution. Okay, I'm sorry, I missed. Why is there a priori expectation that the momentum distribution should be isotropic? 
Um, you see, isotropization is kind of a, a, a prerequisite for, for local equilibrium. It, it, I mean, I don't know how to, I mean, of course, this is a theory, it may happen, but not, no such thing happen. But if hydrodynamic works, you would believe that there is at some point a local equilibrium. See, if you take Boltzmann equation, I'm going to argue about infinity theory. If you take Boltzmann equation and assume that uh, the momentum distribution is isotropic, and Boltzmann equation reduces to the hydrodynamic equation. Okay. That's an exercise that I'm sure you've done. You can use this. But, but this, is, this, is, this is the kind of context. I agree. I agree that uh, but it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not an obvious thing. The semi-modern solutions for hydrodynamics, which are not isotropic, because the process itself is making isotropy. So, the making itself, the, the process itself is making uh, the distribution very anisotropic. Yeah. And uh, anisotropy is actually relaxed, and I will show you that in a moment. But it relaxes on a very long time scale. There's the same rule as the contribution. Okay. It's not a conservation, of course, but it is a, it's a, it's a factor which drives the system away from equilibrium. And this isotropy is visible in the final distribution of particles? Yes. Okay. But uh, maybe, maybe I'll, move. Okay. I'll move on and then uh, perhaps the question will be, uh, will be refined. So, I mean, to, to, to make it more, more precise, I'm, I'm going to, to be. Uh, specialized, uh, specializing into a simple uh, context. I was looking at Bjorken uh, a minute ago. So this is a so-called picture of what we known as Bjorken flow. Uh, this is a space-time diagram where Z is a, is a collision axis. The, the time is running upward here. And uh, um, what this diagram suggests is that uh, there is a boost invariance which implies in particular that most quantity depends not on the time or the z-coordinate separately, but only on the total time. So these are the variable of, of constant for the time. And in this context, the energy density, for instance, I think the slide is equal to zero, maybe here, uh, will obey a very simple equation that the total energy in a slice, uh, let's say around z equal to zero, is simply proportional to the, the inverse of the pressure. So this is dE is minus P dV, where dV is the proportional force by the total time. Okay, so just to fix the, the, the idea. And then I, I would like to, to make a, a parenthesis here to, uh, to I mean, it's, it's somewhat historical, because the first, the first really um, uh, indication that uh, interesting things were going on were, co were, were coming from holographic description of this boost invariant plasma. Um, this was done by, by these people here uh, about uh, even more than 10 years ago. And they calculated, I mean, I, let me skip the detail of the calculation, but essentially they, they calculated quantities which are directly related to this pressure difference, Pt minus Pl, normalized to the energy density. And they obtained this function f of w, where w is some measure of time, uh, it is some thermodynamic function, not be more specific at the moment. And this was obtained by solving Einstein equation for different initial conditions. And what you see here in this region, this is the map, Depending on the initial condition, uh, you get very different results. But after some time, you see the old solution converge a unique solution, and this is hydrodynamic. The way to see that is to compare this solution with hydrodynamic. So this is a quantity. This is another measure. Sorry for the notation, but this is taken from the original paper. This is a, a measure of this asymmetry here. Um, uh, and uh, what this compare is one particular solution here, which is called exact, with hydrodynamic in first order, second order, third order. Third order means uh, it, it refers to gradient expansion, which I will specify in a second. And what you see here, starting from this time, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, this is a unit, uh, what you get is a perfect uh, agreement with exact solution. Uh, perhaps it's good to, not, to note for further 
a discussion that there is not much difference between first order, second order, and third order. And also, you see that third order is completely wrong. I mean, you, you, you do see uh, that it, 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 it diverges. And in fact, this is a major property of this expansion that uh, if I consider this function f, which is related to this pressure difference here by this equation, it can be expanded in powers of one over w, w here is a proper time essentially. And these are the only gradient you have in the system, your can flow. This expansion here is a divergent series. And I will come back to that. But the important, the important point is that uh, indeed, this system here eventually converged to hydrodynamic deviation. Okay, so this difference with the pressure, uh, which measures the anisotropy, eventually uh, it is, is, it is controlled by hydrodynamics and eventually will be match. Um, yeah, maybe I will skip this slide. Uh, and can, can come back to it if you have a question. It has to do with the technicalities of the solution of the which perhaps I haven't, haven't discussed much yet. So what I will do now is that uh, this observation, uh, which started somehow, at least for me, started the whole thing, it, it is an observation which not only applies to model in which uh, uh, we use holographic technique to describe this Bjork and flow, but it applies also in, in kinetics theory. And in, in kinetics theory, the situation is much simpler because we have a con complete control of the initial state and the final state. And this is what I would like to, to explain. And this is what is hidden in the, in the title of attractors and fixed point. So kinetic theory amounts to essentially solve a Boltzmann equation. This is a form of a Boltzmann equation in, uh, in one plus one dimension uh, with some simplification. So this is the left-hand side which describes the, the expansion of the matter by d tau. This is a time derivative. And there is a derivative with respect to momentum along the, the z-axis. F is a distribution function. And, uh, and the right-hand side is an effect of collision, which is written in the so-called relaxation time approximation. Tau sub r is a collision time. If you wish, you can think of it at the time between two successive collisions. And the effect of this term is to uh, relax the actual distribution calculated at each time tau to the equilibrium distribution. We expect, and this is coming back to the question which was asked a minute ago, we expect that eventually uh, collision will drive the system to local equilibrium. And this term here forced forces the system to do so, okay? Um, so there are two regimes in this equation. One regime in which tau is very small compared to tau sub r. So if you wish, you can uh, formally let tau sub r go to infinity, that kills the effect of the collision. And what this equation describes is just the collision mass regime, particle that follows their uh, straight line trajectories, and uh, nothing else happens. And then there is a regime where tau sub r is small. Um, and this is a regime where collision dominates and where we expect hydrodynamics to emerge. OK, so now in order to analyze this equation, of course, this equation can be solved uh, uh, numerically with uh, standard techniques. Uh, this is a trivial thing to do. But I want to, 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 do, to proceed differently by um, uh, by uh, making a kind of a coarse graining which relies on interaction formats. So I'm going to take what, what I have in mind is to, I mean, how the dynamics can be sort of a, an effective theory for the energy momentum tensor. So what I have in mind is to construct a theory for the only two components of the energy momentum tensor which are, um, which are present in this block and flow, which is the energy density and the difference between the longitudinal and the point pressure. So there are two quantities which I need to control. And for these two quantities, I introduce moments, which are what I call L0 for one and L1 for the other. And these two moments allow me to uh, express the energy momentum class. Now, L0 and L1 are part of a larger family of moments, which are 
described here. These are angular integrals, essentially, with a weight which is p squared for all of them. And the angle, of course, I mean, the cosine theta here is a cosine of the angle between the direction of the particle and the z axis. So you want to see the relaxation angle is the energy plus one inch. And you use the same formula as one plus one plus one inch using a relaxation diameter with the same. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I think I have missed the beginning of your. So you are doing a this time, you are doing a relaxation. Yes, this relaxation. So if you go to three plus one dimension, what is the analog of relaxation time? And you would expect the same. In three plus one, in three plus one, the relaxation time approximation will be the same because you see what what in principle, if you have a genuine Boltzmann equation, we have a complicated equation in two but what we expect uh, in the case of Boltzmann, that the collision will eventually drive the, 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 the actual distribution towards the equilibrium, local equilibrium distribution. Okay, so this term here simplifies the collision integral by forcing uh, the, the, the distribution to relax to, to the local distribution. And this collision is the same way. Right. In 3 plus 1, the formula is only five. Of course, you can refine the description by allowing those to bar, for instance, to depend on momentum and all this stuff. But there, is no, there is nothing specific here to, uh, to, to one plus one. What is specific to one plus one, I mean, in the book and flow is, is the left hand side. Okay, so I was mentioning about the moments. Ah, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, so these moments are, are defined by these angular intervals. And just for, I mean, for convenience, I mean, I've written here P0, which is just a constant, and P2 is a quadrupole. I mean, remember, I mean, remember, not that LN is actually an angular integral with P2N. I'm sorry for this, but this is historical. I mean, the, the L1, in other words, is a quadrupole. It's not, it's not a dipole. That's an odd moment. You do not contribute to this because of symmetry between that and minus that. Okay. Anyway, uh, this is for the moment. And now the equation which I have written here uh, can be uh, transcribed uh, entirely in terms of equation for the moments. And these are the moments. These are these equations. So they, they, it's, 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 a, it's a, an infinite tower of, of uh, an infinite tower of, of equations. Uh, the first equation is the equation for the energy density coupling L0 to this uh, pressure difference. And the other one you see are, are equations with the uh, nearest neighbor coupling. Ln is coupled to Ln minus 1 and Ln plus 1. And the effect of the collision is summarized by the damping term here, which does exactly what you expect. Um, the collision, and this is again the third equation. Uh, the collision here, you see clearly that the collision, the effect of the collision is to damp the higher moment of the distribution function. So any distortion away from spherical distribution will eventually be damped by the collision. The only moment which is not suffering such an effect is the energy is L0, the energy density, because energy is not so positive. Okay. So now everything is known in this system. There is a coefficient a n, b n, c n are pure numbers. And, uh, um, and some of these numbers are actually interesting. A0 is, is minus four third. Let's just keep that one in mind because I may use it a little bit later. Uh, one should be aware of the fact that by solving the equation for the moments, I get the exact solution for the energy momentum tensor, this L0 and L1, but I cannot reconstruct the full distribution. There is some coarse draining here, uh, which is involved, but I am not interested in the full distribution, only in the energy momentum tensor, so this is good enough. And again, the competition between expansion and collision is made obvious by, by this uh, separation of collision and expansion. You see, expansion is is the stem one of a tau so and collision of one of the tau. Yeah. Uh, is it uh, interesting how you get uh, A0 and C0? Well, A0 and C0, well, it is interesting. I'm sure I want to, to I mean, there are many interesting things. So 
it, it, here. Yeah. yeah. Does it depend upon the damage? Yes, it would. And it would depend if you wish to move. I mean, even in the one plus one system, it will depend on the equation of spectrum. You see, this, this A0, whenever you reach local equilibrium, L1 vanishes. So this is an equation for the energy density, which tells you how the energy density behave at late time. It tells you that L0 behaves like tau to the power I minus A0. Okay? Isotropic It is isotropic, and not to say it's a one plus one dimensional expansion in space with spherical momentum distribution. Okay? And that gives you four ways. And that gives me the four over three. I mean, you, you can, yeah. The four over three, you see, if there were no, if there were no pressure, particle with free streaming, that would be one over tau. And the one over tau is just the, the, the increase of the core volume is proper time. The one third, the extra one third, is the PDV work due to the expansion in one dimension. In three dimensions, there will be uh, two, two, two times one third more. Okay? So, I just how about the cost of this? How do I get the? Uh, and then minus one and then plus one, please do. Maybe you just the previous one. Well, I'm skipping uh, details of the calculation here. What you have to do is to, is to plug, is to do, uh, is to take the equation, integrate uh, this f on the left and right with the proper Legendre polynomial and use recursion relation and I think I mean to manipulate uh, the equation. To arrive uh, here, I, I'm not saying. I mean, this is straightforward. You know, it's not completely. Uh, uh, you can see the brilliance. That's PZ, right? That uh, that uh, that's a poly. That's, that's a P. That's a the cosine theta is PZ of a P. Yeah. So this is a integration here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess uh, if it doesn't have a tau then it's PC. Yeah. But yeah. the PC part has. I have made complicated the part of the problem, it was simple because the pre streaming solution we know. Okay, but you will see what I get. It's not obvious here because you uh, replace one simple equation by an infinite power of coupled equation. Okay, but what I want to argue is that the, the, the fact that there is nearest neighbor, nearest neighbor coupling, in fact, uh, has uh, interesting consequences. Anyway. What, what I want is again an effective theory for L0, L1. So uh, the simplest thing to do is to eliminate all the higher moments doing a brute force function. And then I get a two by two problem, okay, <laughs> which is written here. It's a two by two problem with constant coefficient, one of a tau in front, and the effect of collision is, is summarized here. So, there's a number of important points here. That this equation, and I will show you that by the end of the talk, contain all version of second order hydrodynamics for this particular context of geometry. All of them can be put into this, this uh, framework with some adjustment of coefficient, uh, B1, A1, uh, not C0. Okay? And I will come back to that. Turns out that you can also solve this equation analytically. Uh, and I won't do that for you, but for those of you who are interested, uh, you can look at this uh, uh, PLB paper. And uh, you can study all the mathematical subtlety, like the divergence of the gradient expansion, the resummation in terms of fun series, uh, the, um, I mean, the beautiful uh, mathematical physics uh, concerning the asymptotic series. It's, uh, but I don't want to get lost into uh, mathematics at this place. I want to arrive at the simple physics. And the other thing is, remember, uh, this moment L0, L1, etc., they talk to each other, they talk only to their neighbors. So L0 and L1, uh, and, and L0 talks to L1 and vice versa, but L1 talks to L0 and to L2. So what I've done is only eliminating. I have eliminated L2. 
And it turns out that this is actually a rather uh, amusing property of the system is that I can uh, obtain nearly exact solution by a simple renormalization of the coefficient A1. So this two by two problem, which actually uh, is part of a, a priori complicated power of equation is actually quite simple. So, I mean, the previous uh, small equations you had uh, some sort of conservation. So here you would have, you know, once you eliminate these moments out, you would lose the fluid into these higher moments. And then uh, how does that get reflected into the template? Uh, this is what I say. I mean, you see, if you want to solve the exact, and, and, and I'm going to do that in a second. If you want to solve the exact equation, you have to know L2, which I have, which I have left out when I, when I write the equation here. I left out L2. If, if by chance I know what to do with L2, I can get the exact solution. And I will go, I, I'm going to show you that I know what to do with L2 in, in, in the next slide. And to do that, I'm going to do another manipulation. And I'm going to transform this two by two linear problem into, uh, into a, a, a differential equation, which is nonlinear. And uh, the, the advantage of doing that will appear as I proceed. Okay, so, so I'm going to introduce a quantity which is uh, the logarithmic derivative of the energy density with respect to proper time. The reason I do that is that is the following. I mean, we expect that at early time, at late time, um, the energy density and also the thermodynamic function will behave as power laws of the proper time. Okay, in other words, uh, we expect that this function G0 will become constant at early or late time. Okay, and this is indeed what happens. So that, that will be uh, what I will characterize by a fixed point of, of, of the equation in a second. This quantity G0 is also a physical interpretation. It's directly related to this quantity PL minus PT over energy density by, by this relation where, where A0 and C0 are the, are, are the numbers which I discussed before. Now, this object obeys an exact equation, which is indicated here, where in blue, I have left the term which depends on L2. Okay. Now, let, let's for a moment, let's ignore this term and try to solve this equation. So the way I, I view this equation is like a renormalization group equation. So I write it like a, D, uh, tau d by d tau of g0 is beta of g0, where the beta function is given by this, uh, this quadratic form here. So picturally, this is a beta function, and you see that it has two fixed points, two places where the time derivative vanishes, uh, one here and one here. So one is stable, I mean, which is, if you do a simple uh, stability analysis, you will find that this fixed point is stable, where this fixed point is unstable. The fixed point the value of the fixed points, of course, corresponds to the, to the eigenvalue of the original linear problem. Okay, but it's easier to think of it in this way because, for reasons that I'm not really able to explain, but uh, if we increase, if you try to play the game of uh, which we did at the beginning, because we do not understand why simple truncation work well, if you increase. Uh, the, the size of the linear problem. I say, okay, well, instead of taking two moments, I'm going to take 27 or 38. Okay, system converge actually quite fast. And what you find is that uh, the, the, the form of the beta function almost doesn't change. Okay, then it turns out that there are only two real eigenvalues in this problem. The other one are complex, don't seem to play much of a role. I mean, the mathematics of that, I don't fully, fully understand, but it's a fact. Okay, and now I can do much better because um, in the vicinity of the stable fixed point, I know in fact exactly the ratio L2 over L0. This is given by the geometry of the expansion. This ratio is known. So if I if I inject in this equation the value of L2 over L0, for example, in the vicinity of this fixed point. I get the blue parabola here, which goes exactly through the exact fixed point. So this is what I meant by renormalization of, of the coefficient A1, and you will see that in, a, in more detail a little bit later. Uh, there is a simple way to obtain 
the exact behavior of the solution in the vicinity of this restraining uh, fixed point. Now, this is so far without the collision. Okay, I'm not, I've just described for you the solution, another way to write the solution of a trivial problem in particle of this space. So now it turns out that the collision don't change the picture very much. Uh, this is now the same equation with collision included. The collision depends entirely on this factor uh, tau over tau sub bar, which is the ratio of the collision rate, one over tau sub bar, over the expansion rate, which is one over tau, the ratio is tau over tau sub bar, which I call W here. And you see in red, I've indicated the places where W appear. So if you are in a regime where tau sub bar is it, 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 very, very large, you can uh, ignore W and you get back the equation I was talking from you before. And in the other regime where W uh, becomes uh, large, then the only term which counts are the term in red, WG0 minus W times A0. And what you find is that uh, a G0 is the solution of this uh, equation, simple equation, WG0 minus A0 is equal to zero, gives you, uh, Say, oh no, there is a minus sign here. So the equation is actually written here. It gives you G0 is minus four third, and this is the hydrodynamic degree, which is what I will refer to hydrodynamic fixed point. Okay. So, <clears throat> so there are this system now, you see, there's a complex system of equation, uh, which, this, which is uh, another way to look at the kinetic equation. Has its property that there are in the absence of collision, there are two fixed points, one is stable and one is stable. And uh, at late time, there is one fixed point, which is a hydrodynamic fixed point. And now the attractor, which has been uh, which has been motivating a lot of these studies, uh, in fact, in this particular context, is just a the particular solution which joins one fixed point, what the sort of the stable piston fixed point at time power to zero. Is the hydrodynamic this point. So to show you how this uh, works, I have written, I have drawn here the, the behavior. Uh, there, there is a non-trivial uh, thing here is that there is, you see, evolve slowly. There is some adiabaticity uh, uh, involved here, which, well, okay, let me skip that. I mean, take, take my word for, for what it is. There is a slow evolution of the fixed point, so that the notion of fixed point that I was discussing before is still, uh, is still useful. And what I'm plotting here is, is the location of this fixed point, which is, which is minus one initially, minus one, and which will move slowly to minus four thirds. So this is as a function of time. What I represent here. So you see, this is close to minus one. And as time passes by, I will move towards the uh, hydrodynamic fixed point here. And the attractor is essential, so not, not really, not, not quite, but almost the location of this point as a function of time. And I have a picture which shows that in, in more detail. This is now exact solution. I mean, it's not quite the exact. I mean, um, um, uh, yes, let me, I'm sorry, let me, let me step back a little while. If I start this system of equation exactly, uh, but without L2, I get values for the fixed point, which are not quite what they should be. If, instead of minus one, I get minus 0.93. And the plot which is here is the attractor for this particular uh, approximation. I can improve, and I will do that in the next slides. Uh, move this point from minus one from, from minus point nine to minus one. But anyway, the qualitative uh, features remain. I, the, the attractor is a solution which starts from this restrictive point, where the distribution is completely flat in the z direction. And eventually goes to the other fixed point, the hydrodynamic fixed point, where the momentum distribution is completely spherical. Of course, this so this is a solution of the equation, okay, a very peculiar solution. If you start with other initial condition, you will be attracted to this curve, 
this is a, you start from here, let's say, then you will, uh, the solution will evolve and eventually merge to the attractor. Of course, if you start somewhere here, we will directly to the hydrogen again, six point. So in, in this region, you see uh, the, an important point to, to emphasize, sometimes people talk in particular, this was uh, the whole country like, in which emerged from this uh, hydrodynamic uh, um, uh, evolution in the context of, uh, of um, holographic description. People talk about hydrodynamic attractor, but this is, I think, a misnomer and, and, and a bit misleading because this third here, I mean, in particular, the transition region requires information in both fixed points. You can describe this region accurately in the vicinity of uh, hydrodynamics by making viscous correction. You can describe the vicinity of this fixed point by simply doing perturbation theory. But the transition region itself is something which requires information for both sides. And this is, I mean, if some of you have played with the restoration of the gradient expansion in this context, you, you will recognize that at some point, even in trans series, you need to get information about the early time dynamics in order to describe uh, late time dynamics. So let me now come to the uh, comparison with hydrodynamics and explain to you why um, the statement that I made at the beginning of the talk that uh, uh, the early time may be captured by some hydrodynamic equations, but this has nothing to do with hydro. Well, let me let me explain to you what I mean. Yes. Why is the G0 equal minus four third of an isotropic? G0 is minus four third is an isotropic. I, I missed why. You missed why. Uh, I will uh, tell you why by looking at the, uh, let's say, there is an equation which, uh, uh, yes, this equation. Why? Uh, I mean, it's. Uh, Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, okay, let me give you the argument. Okay. This is the argument is that if it is isotropic, uh, this is minus four. Okay. We, we need to work a little bit more to, to make sure that it, it has to be like this. Yeah. Okay. But, but this is consistent. This, is, this I can say immediately. Um, so let's, let's come back to this, to this question. So, uh, Hydrodynamic want this is this is the hydrodynamic, this is the energy momentum tensor for, for the fluid, which depends on the on energy density and the pressure. The pressure in this context is related to the energy by some equation of state. This is where the speed of sound is coming in. And then you, you, you here is a full velocity of the fluid. So you, in hydro description, the, the fluid is described by thermodynamic field by the energy density pressure plus. Uh, 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 four velocity, which is by the motion of the fluid. That's, that's, that's this Q mu. And then uh, G mu nu is a metric tensor. And then there is a viscous correction to the thermodynamic pressure, which I is denoted by phi mu. Um, so, ideal hydrodynamics uh, involve only this uh, first two terms, ignore phi mu nu. And that leads to this uh, behavior in, in front to the minus four third. Okay, pi is a viscous correction, and in fact, in the present, in, in the context of block and flow, this is uh, essentially the shear viscosity. The shear, uh, I mean, this is uh, controlled by the shear viscosity eta, and the exact expression of pi in this context is given by eta or tau times the number four third, which is which is not actually related to the other one. Uh, or maybe related to the I, I, I forgot. But anyway, if you if you if you use this expression for phi, this is what people call a constitutive equation. That's an example of gradient expansion on the field. You assume that, that initially there is no, I mean the other term, the other term don't depend on gradients, but this term here will be first order of gradients and for the organ through the gradients of inverse powers of power. So if you do that, then you end up with an Navier Stoke equation, which is written here in this particular form. So this can be solved, which is simple. Now, Navier Stokes equation, uh, in, in, in a more general context, have difficulty with, uh, uh, with causality, uh, because uh, if, you, if you study fluctuations, you find that for some wavelengths, you have signal which propagates uh, faster than speed of light. 
So this was a known problem and which uh, uh, which uh, invited uh, in particular Israel and Stewart and the first uh, later year of Stanford Müller who did analogous work in years ago. And what 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 these uh, these authors uh, uh, realize is that uh, uh, I mean the, the, the carry through analysis, an analysis which uh, led them to an equation for pi uh, object here which contains a, a relaxation term over a time scale which is called force of pi and which we, you see it forced the pi to relax to the uh, value which would be which would be given by natural leading order uh, constitutive equation. The important point is that there is this additional time derivative here. And if you look at this equation and we express quantities, you relate pi to the uh, L1 moment and epsilon to the L0 moment, we find that this equation here is identical to the equation for the moment L1. Provided you identify tau sub pi with tau sub r and a1 is for t1 with the coefficient a1. So, in other words, this hydro equation, this is the equation for L0, this is the equation for L1. So, the hydro equation of this one's evil in this particular context can be completely identified with the two moment equation of the kinetic theory. And uh, this is a table of uh, I identified some equation. But now let's see, let, let's compare, let's compare the results uh, and, and, and make the point that we can emphasize. So the, I want to compare now uh, hydro with the exact uh, Boltzmann equation. So, the, so I'm going to compare a calculation that I didn't do myself. It's a calculation, uh, it's a nice calculation done by Nicole and Romina in, uh, in a couple of years ago. Well, they calculated uh, the solve the Boltzmann equation for constant cross section. Now, uh, constant cross section means, in terms of relaxation time, that the uh, relaxation time is proportional to time. This is indicated here. And the reason is very simple the relaxation time is one of a cross section time density, and the density in the orchid flow decays like one over tau, so that you get immediately the tau sub r proportional to tau. So if tau sub r is proportional to tau, the expansion rate is always comparable to the collision rate. So there is kind of stationary uh, problem here. But you can calculate, you can solve the Boltzmann equation as a function of a quantity which is called the Knudsen number, ratio of microscopic over microscopic, mi microscopic over microscopic scale. And in the, in the particular context of York and flow, the Knudsen number is essentially one over the W. But okay, what, what you need to, to, to keep in mind is that on the left, these are small Knudsen number, this is hydro regime. On the right, you go to large content number, this is uh, collision leverage. And now you can compare, you can calculate, you can solve the net stock equation. This is a quantity which is not quite PL over PT. This is pi, the viscous pressure, divided by the sum of energy density plus pressure. Okay, so this is another measure of, uh, of as an asymptotic. If you, if you do that, the stock equation, you fix, uh, that determines the slope here in this, uh, in this, uh, this plot. This is an Navier Stokes hydrodynamic. If you do Israel's P wall hydrodynamics with parameters A1, which is fixed usually to A0, which is false, you get this orange curve. The two moment equation, which comes from the kinetic without any adjustment, has a value of A1, which is 38 over 21, which is this curve here. And then I have another curve in which I have adjusted A1 to be 31 over 15. These are the black dots here. It's not a curve because uh, the calculation has to be done for several minutes. And you see that this is black dot completely matched with the exact solution of the Boltzmann equation. Now, where is this number 31 over 15 coming from? Remember, I told you that uh, for the, in the, in the case of uh, the truncation, the two moment truncation, I can take into account the effect of the higher moments by renormalizing A1. And that renormalization can be done exactly in the vicinity of a fixed point. And this is what is given here. You see this combination C0, C1, L2 over L0. If I go back in my fixed point equation, 
This is a combination which is written in blue here. And this I can calculate uh, because I know everything. And I get uh, this, uh, joint, I mean, this uh, correction to A1, which is 31. So, but, but you see, the, the important point is that when you do that, when you correct A1, you see within the, within the hydro framework, you say A1 looks like a seminal order transport range. So I can adjust it. And I would improve hydrodynamics by tuning A1. But if you think of what you're doing here, <laughs> You don't adjust anything like a single model transfer prediction. You just correct for the wrong prediction of the free swimming fixed point in in, in uh, Israel's table of hydrodynamics. Okay, so so we are not improving hydrodynamics in other words. We are we are making a better description of the of the trivial regime, which is collision test. And this can be this can be seen, and this is my my last slide. <clears throat> this can be seen in another way by calculating PL over PT. So this is again, I mean, this black uh, or orange line uh, is uh, no, so, so the black uh, line is the exact result of kinetic theory. You have Israel's keyword here in blue. Navier Stoke is the dashed line, and the red is a moment uh, with I mean, there's a two moment equation. And you see, with with the adjustment of A1, which is the orange curve, uh, you get uh, you get exactly uh, the exact result. So again, again, we have not been improving the hydro regime. The hydrodynamic starts when the uh, collision rate becomes comparable to the expansion rate maybe in the region where W here is on the order of a few units. <laughs> but what you have changed is the position of this fixed point. And this has an effect. I mean, you can view this as another representation of the attractor. You see, this has an effect which propagates over all the transition region between the two fixed points. Okay. I guess with this, I am, uh, I, am uh, I am essentially done. So what I've shown you is uh, is a solution of a simple kinetic equation uh, to analyze. I mean, my, my goal was to analyze a transition from. Uh, from the regime of collision-less uh, motion to uh, hydrodynamics. This is a simple kinetic equation. I claim I did not show or show you because that requires an analysis by Ian Compasses tool, all second order version of uh, hydrodynamics in this particular context. I have emphasized the role of fixed points. Which I prefer to that of attractor because the attractor is a line which joins to this one. But uh, the, the important transition region requires information about the two, which is not what we, you would expect in, uh, if you if you think of hydrodynamic attractor. And um, and uh, I guess that's just a repetition of just of what I just said. So let me let me conclude the If there are any questions from the Zoom audience, please speak up. Okay, if not, any questions from the audience? Yeah. So when you say exact solution, is that like this solving the moment expression of two higher from higher moment, or you are directly solving the Boltzmann equation without going to the uh, so In the plot, to show the exact solution, yes. the exact solution, how are you solving this? Is, uh, you are directly solving the Boltzmann equation Wait. without going to the moment expression? Oh, I I, it, I mean, that is a way. I mean, we found it. I mean, there are several ways you can solve the equation. The kinetic or even the kinetic equation. You can just solve it numerically by every post. I mean, there are iterative solutions. Um, but we find it in practice easier to solve it in terms of moments. So you take 10 or 15 moments and to be not to get the extent of this. Okay. But in fact, two moments with the random relation of A1, it's just really so this is actually very interesting for me because it looks like just a CMD in reverse. 
the caustic microwave background, the will be a little bit close. Yes. When you're solving for caustic microwave background, we agree that we need a wet low end expansion. Yes. We are looking for the nicer properties. Exactly. It's just in reverse because here, uh, so there, initially we are in a traditional regime, and then we transition into the free stream regime. Yes. 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 Uh, and there also, I think we have to be very similar results that you need higher order movements when you are in the traditional regime, first two movements are, you know, when you go to uh, pre stream regime, you need higher and higher movements. Absolutely, absolutely. No, no, it, it, it's exactly the same problem with reverse. Well, there is a, there is a difference though. It, it's a it's a 3D expansion, right? I guess. Yeah, I mean, spherical. Yeah. Spherical expanding universe. Expanding universe. Uh, so if you don't, you do not have this particular feature here. The strong competition between the, the expansion in one direction and isotropization. So that's a, that's a different uh, issue. But, uh, but yes, there are like the propagation uh, is happening. So, we have the similar terms where you see that higher order moments in the collisional regime, they are suppressed by just factor of one over time. The tower is over collisions. Yes, yes, yes. yes. No, no, that's, that's, that's what I agree. Uh, what, I, uh, what I was going to say is okay. yeah, there are, in, 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 uh, you see, in, 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 to describe. Uh, a very flat distribution, and you need a new TV set of problems. Right. And, 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 and that, what, what is surprising is that that the series of moments doesn't converge, or it converts very, very slowly. So you need that. A priori, really, you need many, many moments. And so we were surprised that these two, you could get almost a second. And I don't know if it was your case, whether, uh, whether this happens or not, because when you go away from local, from, from equilibrium, Entering the free streaming regime, uh, do you get many anisotropic moments? Yes, yes. So the anisotropic moment starts uh, increasing as you go to a free streaming regime. Yes. Okay, but uh, I would be curious to, to, to look at this. This problem when I work in avian physics because you're talking about early state where it's coming into the liquid. But uh, also in the base stages when it's freezing out, it's exactly the problem that they are. Yeah. We'll have the same thing. And there, yes. we expect that it's actually 3D micro, not 1D micro. Yes. Okay, so that question probably has experimental brilliance also. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yes. Exactly. But, but once you have reached some isotropic distribution, you want to be to stop colliding. And come out uh, in a different way. How do you lose that? This is a usual. This is a usual yeah. assumption that the, 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 you have to make a run. So what you're seeing in the detectors is individual particles, and you have to you have to be able to go from the hydrodynamic description to the particle description. Okay, and <laughs> this is something that the kinetic theory already has. Okay, but if you're using hydrodynamics, you have to figure out how many extra modes, extra moments you carry out. Because of the distribution. Yeah, but, 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 but you usually, in most, in most, I mean, at least most analysis I've seen, usually we assume that we have a, a nearly isotropic distribution of momentum until the temperature drops something below the ion mass or something yeah, like that. Then and you then, use, then, 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 you, then we use the, use the, you know, Black box. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Because it would have very high levels, right? Because once you average them out, it should be exposed. And those, those, in fact, those are also the fluctuations, the very important fluctuations. Yeah. Those are interesting. Any other questions for the Okay, not uh, okay. okay. So one more CMD also see that in this initial plasma, there are the small perturbations, they start oscillating. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they create sound waves. Yes. So there's something similar happens here, but if you have some sounding, but there's not enough time to sound waves to appear or something. So you also have some boundary conditions you you know, have to stand in sound waves to um, some oscillations to start happening in that plasma. 
Well, I think, I think that, that's certainly a possibility, but this is somehow, I mean, what, what I've done, I've done uh, um, a lot of simplification. And, and I think the geometry of the, of the system that I'm looking at probably doesn't allow too much, uh, too much freedom to, to develop. But in principle, we're doing a real three-dimensional three uh, calculation for shipments. And in fact, uh, there, there are instabilities which are not quite in some ways, but uh, uh, of initial color fields. You know, this is QCD eventually, okay, on the lines here. And, uh, and this instability, when, when there is an isotropic distribution, there are instabilities in the field which uh, can, uh, can trigger uh, instabilities. So these phenomena are potentially there, but, uh, but they are not part of the discussion. Any, any other questions? Okay, so let's thank uh, John Paul again.